wandering through Africa, far away from Afghanistan, a Scottish missionary was about to find out about the continent of Africa. His love for Africa would pave the way for yet another invasion. It was a chilly spring night in Scotland, and David Livingstone was tired of studying for his medical degree. He stood up, stretched, and looked around his tiny room. He was ready for a break. Just down the street, a missionary was giving a special talk on Africa. Livingston knew nothing about this mysterious, unexplored continent. He decided that he'd go down and listen to the missionary's adventures before he went back to his books. The missionary, Robert Moffat, told story after story of his life in Africa as David Livingston sat fascinated. Moffat had been living for years in a town called Kuruman. five hundred miles from the southern coast of Africa. In the far south of Africa, the Dutch and British and other Europeans were already living and trading. They had built a busy city called Cape Town on the coast, and had settled all around Cape Town as well. But north of Kuruman lay the rest of the huge continent of Africa, hundreds and hundreds of miles that no European had ever seen. Often, as I have looked to the vast plains of the north, Robert Moffat told his audience. I have, in the morning sun, seen the smoke of a thousand villages where no missionary has ever been. As he heard those words, David Livingston was filled with a great desire to visit those thousand villages, to care for the sick and to preach Christianity. A year later, Livingston had finished his studies and become a doctor. He boarded a ship and sailed for Africa. When he arrived at the port of Cape Town, he found hundreds of Europeans building trading posts and settlements along Africa's coast. But Livingston was anxious to move away from Europeans towards the mysterious heart of Africa. He traveled slowly northward, learning to survive like an African. He ground flour for his bread by hand, ate boiled caterpillars and locusts, and enjoyed one of the great delicacies of Africa, an enormous frog that lived in the earth and croaked loudly right before rain. It is nearly as large as a chicken, Livingston wrote in his journal. As he learned more and more about Africa, Livingston came to hate the slave trade, the practice of taking Africans from Africa and selling them as slaves to other countries. Even though the slave trade was illegal, slave traders were still visiting the coast of Africa and taking Africans away into slavery. David Livingston hoped to stop the slave trade. He thought that if he went on exploring Africa, he might find rivers and other trade routes that ran into the center of Africa. If Europeans could reach the center of Africa easily, they could come in and trade with the Africans for ivory, salt, and other goods, instead of for slaves. Livingston's explorations almost killed him. Three years after his arrival, he was living in Mabotsa, a town just east of the burning sands of the Kalahari Desert. For weeks, the people of Mabotsa had been losing their cows to lions that broke into their cattle pens. Livingston agreed to go out with his African companions to drive the lions away. But as he was loading his gun, a lion crept up behind him unnoticed. It leaped on Livingston, knocked him to the ground, grabbed his shoulder, and shook him back and forth. Later, Livingston wrote, the shaking caused a sort of dreaminess, in which there was no sense of pain, nor feeling of terror, a stupor, similar to that which seems to be felt by a mouse after the first shake of the cat. Two of Livingston's African friends shot the lion with their rifles. The lion turned and attacked them, but before it could kill either man, it staggered and collapsed. Livingston's arm was badly broken, but he refused to return home. He wanted to keep on looking for those trade routes that would bring the slave trade to an end. In 1857, the same year as the Sepoy Mutiny, Livingston wrote a book about his explorations called 
missionary travels. He returned. Turned to England so that the book could be published. It was a tremendous success. Thousands and thousands of copies were sold. The British were happy to forget about the troubles in India for a little while and read about an exciting new continent instead. David Livingston became famous. A year later, in 1858, the government of Great Britain gave David Livingston the official job of finding trade routes into Africa for British traders. The papers that made Livingston a consul, a British government official, told him to go on exploring Africa so that Great Britain could promote commerce and civilization in Africa with a view to the extinction of the slave trade. So David Livingston set sail for Africa once more, this time with the support of his country. For the next 15 years, he would go on exploring Africa, mapping out its rivers and lakes and learning about its dozens of kingdoms. The land of the Oromo, of the Maasai, the Burundi, the Luba, and many, many more. Livingston spent so many years in the center of Africa that many people began to wonder whether or not he was still alive. Finally, the American newspaper, the New York Times, sent one of its journalists, Henry Morton Stanley, to find the missing explorer. Stanley traveled across Africa for weeks until he found the famous missionary at Ujiji, a village just east of the Congo River. He saw a man whose face was carved with deep lines and tanned brown as leather by the sun. The skin seemed to stretch tightly over his bones. A branch had snapped back into one of his eyes and injured it. His left arm hung at his side, twisted and almost useless. Stanley was so awed in the presence of this great man that he decided to display the best American manners he could. He walked up to David Livingston, took off his hat, and said, Dr. Livingston, I presume. Stanley offered to take Livingston back home to England, but the missionary refused. He had decided to remain in Africa for the rest of his life. Two years later, David Livingston died in a hut in Central Africa. His African friends took out his heart and buried it under a tree, according to African tradition. Then they wrapped his body in bark and canvas, tied it to a pole, and carried it to the coast so that a European ship could take David Livingston home. David Livingston had hoped to make Africa stronger, but his maps of Africa would make it easier, years later, for England and other European countries to come into Africa and to treat it just as India had been treated, like a land to be captured, conquered, and used.